G'day and welcome back to my channel. Now I seem to be having a bit of an Italian affair at the moment. There's there's lots of Italian things on my bench like um, this little uh, Fiat Bambino. Yes, this little Fiat 500 that I'm doing as a commission job. More of that later. That has been, well, let's just say it's been very Italian. And this is the thing. The Italian subjects are very interesting. They're weird, they're wacky, they're, they're not the same as, you know, the precision of the German. <laughs> you know, they're so exact. They're not as tally-ho as the British ones, you know. They're not as stars and stripes as the American stuff. You see where I'm going with this, okay? Every country's got its flavour. And Italian machines and naval stuff especially, which is what this video's about, they're a bit unusual, <laughs> to say the least. There have been some weird and wacky ships. But in this video, I'm going to have a look at a new release by Trumpeter. Okay? See that? It's pretty big. I oh, know. Yeah, microphone's in the bloody way. This is the new Fumi. <laughs> I don't think I pronounced that correctly. Fumi. I don't know. Let's say it in an Italian accent. Fumi. Whatever. Maybe somebody can tell me how to say the bloody thing. Anyhow, the purpose of my video, I'm going to call it the Fumi, okay? Not because it smells. No, this is a fantastic kit, and it comes hot on the heels of the Zara, which Trump had put out a few years ago, which was also fantastic. But we already know that, although I will show you inside the Fumi kit, okay? For those of you who haven't seen a Zara, and there's a lot of great builds online showing that kit, it is absolutely true. It is, you know, modern molding, lots of photo etch that's in the kit, and the results are just beautiful. It's a fantastic kit. But way back when, in Hobby Wash slash Trumpeter's evil past, they produced this kit called the Polar, right? Now, um, well, let me put it down. It's pretty ordinary. It's pretty ordinary. But I hope to show in this video, it's still got merit. Now, the Polar can be picked up for virtually nothing. People are giving them away, right? But they don't know what I know. And if you've got one of the new Trumpeter kits and you compare them, then suddenly the penny drops and you realise the Polar is a bargain. All right? So, you want to find out about that? Yes? Have I piqued your interest? Yes? Okay then, roll the music! So, what's wrong with the Polar, you might ask? Well, the kit itself is buildable, but it's really the history we need to look at, and that explains what went wrong with the Polar, okay? Now, essentially, it first came out in 1999, and it was a trumpeter kit. All right, trumpeter and hobby boss have an incestuous relationship, very much like Dragon and Cyber Hobby, or even harking back to, like, Airfix and um, Heller, okay, and Monogram and Revel of America, okay? And this is quite common in the, the, um, the modelling history of, of manufacturers, is that they get in bed with each other, or they um, basically set up subsidiaries, and it, it all gets very incestuous, okay? But anyhow... All you've got to do is look at some of the new Hobby Boss kits and you instantly can see the instructions and the paint guides are identical to the Trumpeter kits. In fact, the quality in both Hobby Boss and Trumpeter have come on leaps and bounds in the last 20 years. But anyhow, back to 1999 and Trumpeter releases this um, kit and it was probably a copy or a scale up of the um, 400 scale one, which I think actually was a Heller kit and um, it was scaled down because they would have taken it from 400 350. No, scale up. I don't know. They made it a bit bigger. <laughs> All right. So um, a lot of that stuff went on in those very dark and dismal early years. As we discussed, if you've ever looked at my Arizona video called The Scuttlebutt, okay? And uh, things were going on. Those were the shady days. All right. So anyhow, um, Trumpeter puts out a 1350 Polar. And it's kind of got molding indications that it was meant for the bathtub. It was a motorized version, okay? So it's pretty simple. It's missing a whole lot of the superstructure. It's, um, you know, some of the minor parts like the radar and the range finders and, and the, um, the smaller guns are not molded very well. They're just kind of little blobs, really. Okay, but, but overall, the hull isn't bad. And as I'll show shortly, I'll get into it, the hull, the superstructure, the citadel, and everything are not bad. There's just details missing. But if you're building a bathtub kit or something just to, you know, basically throw in the pond, 
you don't really need all that. It's just something that's quick and easy for someone to build, and then they can go out and have fun with it. Okay, so maybe on those grounds, it was perfect for what it was at the time. But these days, of course, we expect more, more, more. So then um, a number of years ago, so like two or three years ago, the Zara came out from Trumpeter. Okay, and beautiful, beautiful kit. Everything's in there, tons of photo etch. It builds up and it's fantastic. All right, so that's good. And then I say just recently, the, um, the Fumi's out, which I'm going to talk about in great detail. But the Polar, hmm, how does it stack up? So the best way to do that, I think, is we'll have a look at the new Fumi, because that's exciting to look at. Although it's, it's pretty well the Zara with a different box. <laughs> And, you know, that doesn't see that. Oh, there's a slight change in the stern mast and crane. That's about it. Um, apart from that, the parts are pretty well identical. You know, it's how it is. It's how it is. But that's not a problem. It's a good kit as a Zara. And it's a fantastic kit as a Fumi. And the Fumi has got a terrific, terrific camo scheme that you can put on it. Yes. All right. So with further ado, let's have a look at the Fumi. And as we go, we'll have a look at corresponding parts from the Hobby Boss Polar Kit. And then you can get an idea of where it's good and where it isn't. And I'll give you the solutions. And really, there's some simple ways to turn the Polar Kit into something approaching the quality of the Fumi. And you're going to save yourself about $100. No kidding. Yes, it's that much cheaper. All right, so let's have a look at that. Pask, everyone keeps asking about you and wants you in the videos. What are you going to say for yourself? Hmm? What are you going to say? Oh, this is buggered. I'm leaving. Now, one of the things you're going to notice when you uh, get one of these uh, Zara or Fumi kits is they are full. There's a ton of stuff in there. Now, I've got a little bit of aftermarket, okay, so we'll just put that to the side for the time being. Um, just a few things. And we'll just um, concentrate on what you get in the kit. And there's lots, all right? So uh, we might get off shaky cam. I only had to use shaky cam because there's, there's no way to get the size of the box. It's quite big. Yeah, it's quite a reasonable size kit. Now, I've only bought a few aftermarket things, so I'll just quickly show you those and get them out of the way. I bought metal barrels, and although they're for the Polar, basically your, um, your barrel's going to be the same for pretty well the whole series. All the, the ships in the Zara class had the same barrels. Although, as I'll explain later, they had different fits from the different periods, depending whether you're starting with the early 30s versions or right up until the end of the 30s, um, until they were sunk in the early 40s. There's um, really only a change in tertiary um, and, and secondary. The uh, primary battery of the uh, 8 8 inch, I think then, 8 8 inch, <laughs> they're identical, okay, so 200 millimeter or 203, but then after that, it changes, and I'll explain that later. So we won't worry about that. Wood deck, look, it's it's not needed. Honestly, you'll see the moulding the kit's beautiful and you can paint up your wood deck, it'll look fine. You know, you've only got it, it only has a wood deck on the stern. So that's all you need. Okay, but I buy them anyway. I like them. For me, um, I have my reasons and, and I like putting on wood decks. So that's just a foible, a foible. Now the kit comes with tons of PE, okay? So you don't need to buy any. And that's one good thing and it's also probably a bad thing for some people because as far as I can tell and we will find out in more details go through there are no plastic alternatives this isn't like a dragon smart kit where you get plastic parts and you get photo etch parts and you can decide what you want to do you're pretty well stuck there's things you know your radar and a few other things that's all you've got and you really need those on the ship and your cranes and what have you railings well ships look really good with them on and they're worth doing so, you know, I'd encourage you to put railings on. You've, you've got them, you want to use them. Some people don't like to do it. It's up to you. But um, ladders, well, I don't think there's any plastic ladders anywhere. So you've got to use the photo etch ones and cranes, as I say, and a little bit here of um, the superstructure part. So you are stuck in a lot of ways with using the photo etch, which you may or may not like. I like it, so I'm happy with that. The um, drawing paint guide that comes with the kit is absolutely gorgeous as we can see and this is the reason I had waited for this kit rather than buying the Zara and, and in fact a friend of mine said the duck knew I really wanted this kit so he uh, snuck it in as my birthday present. Um, 
this camo is just gorgeous and and I love a green hull I really do love green hull although it might be a bit contentious because by the time they did kind of fancy color schemes they were actually running the red hull hmm so there you go but maybe I don't know I've got to do some more research because it is hard to find photos and you know, it is hard to figure out what's going on but um, maybe they did have that one I mean that's what they've done they've done it with the green hull and with the that camo so the green one was the early one and if that happens you can change the gun arrangement but I'll discuss that more in another video there's another way you can do your guns and the kit this kit supports that so yeah it's very pretty all right let's have a look at some plastic parts now as is the case with all the new trumpeter and hobby boss kits everything's in its own bags it's terrific the, the packaging is fantastic. We'll even see the smaller parts shortly. They're all wrapped in foam. I mean, you, you can't fault them with the way that they give you the kit. So straight out of the box and straight out of the bag, let's have a look at what we got here. So I haven't cut anything. I'm just, this is the very first time I've taken these parts out. Now that is the bow. And I know that because that's what they launched the aircraft on. So straight out of the box, well, straight out of the box, out of the bag. Look at that. It is a perfect fit. There's no warpage. There's no nothing. There's no gaps. That is gorgeous. That is 21st century modeling technology. And the molding on there, you can see, is superb. Now, it's not wood here. No. They're metal plates. And in fact, this would get covered in red and white stripes, which is another reason I bought the... Um, the, the wood deck kit uh, aftermarket because you get a mask to do your stripes. You'll also notice, well, there's a few greebles and things, but there's not a lot, not as many as there would be. They get added afterwards, which is a big advantage because painting those red stripes, you want the least amount of things in your way because it's going to be a bit tricky. Anybody that's ever worked with red and white knows how hard it is. But Trumpeter have done a fantastic job to render this so clear and so crisp. And as I say, the fit is perfect. And well, that's just sitting in there. No clamps, no nothing. It's sitting in perfectly. All right. So we'll have a look at the um, the second part of the main deck, all right, which is step down. These ships were actually a bit heavy in the bow. So um, because of that, the bow sat a bit lower and they basically did step it up, like they do on destroyers and things like that. Okay. So you had a higher bow section to your stern and that made them run really well apparently they were incredibly watertight they were so surprised when they first ran them how watertight they were there was just basically very few problems now again look at the fit it is absolutely superb okay so I haven't trimmed anything I haven't done anything that's out of the bag straight on there I could pretty well glue that and go for it I mean I'll probably check and make sure there aren't any little molding edges and things now you'll see here here's your stern part and you can see the wood deck is very finely molded very fine so for those of you that like to paint your wood decks you can do it there it is and again there's a oh, there's a few greebles there's a few annoying greebles but I mean I'll just slap my veneer on that and that problem is solved so look at that hull it is beautiful it is beautifully molded okay there's still, I keep doing them very smooth down here, so I'll probably be putting some nail tape on to try and get a bit of, you know, panel effects, as there would be. But um, the portholes, you probably wouldn't even bother drilling them out. They, um, they already have depth to them. So it's, um, it's, it's all you want. You want them to appear, right? You want them to be quite prevalent. And you're only going to have to put a tiny wash, and they'll be seen easily. So that's all good. It's all very nice. Now you've got a few sort of marks here and there, but that's just part of the injection process. Okay, you might be able to see there. But that disappears once you put paint on it. That's, there's no actual physical feel to it. It's not actually a bump. It's just part of when they're injecting and the, the color of the plastic. I think something like the plastic dye um, seems to leave these marks. But yeah, slap some paint on it, it'll be fine. Absolutely fine. There you go. So the only thing you have to clean up here is you've just got a couple of little points which are pretty well where you put the stand anyway, if you're going to put a stand on it. So that's handy. So yeah, no complaints at all with the hull on this Fumi. And just to give you a quick look, this is the Never Set wood deck that I got out of Hong Kong, 
actually arrived in a couple of weeks so really good considering everything that's going on this zombie apocalypse it fits beautifully and look at the detail and the texture that you get there so that's the thing I mean that's lovely and I'll add a wash to that and some effects and I'll get even more of a wood look to it so I, I do like a wood veneer deck but it's a personal preference now a quick look through some of the other parts the um, the superstructure here uh, basically the secondary deck beautiful slide molded which I believe when you get those kind of rectangular sprue pieces is slide molding and I believe it's sharper I believe it looks better than normal injection molding right slide molding is apparently still injection molding but it's slidey <laughs> I don't know the exact mechanics of it all I know is you seem to get sharper edges and better detail with this slide molding it's a thing so there you go, it's just technology, don't worry about it. But these parts look lovely, and again, here's some more. This will be the stern piece, the stern superstructure there. Absolutely lovely. And I mean, they've even drilled out all the holes for the, um, you know, the little port holes there. You, you wouldn't, well, they're not fully drilled out, but they're deep enough that you just put a wash in them. You wouldn't, you wouldn't really need to draw them out. They're, they're terrific, just as they are. Okay, so the kit is just lovely out of the box. Now the rest of the kit, again, everything's in plastic bags. Everything is very nicely moulded. I mean, you can have a look at things like this. Sorry, I won't take it out of the bag. I don't want to debag everything today. But I will do a whole lot of sprue photos and put them up on Facebook. I'll put a little link for that in the description. The um, yeah, the little motorboats and everything, they're very nice. They're, they're really good, okay? And things like your, um, your range finders here, really crisp, really nicely moulded, okay? Take my word for it. You've got um, a little RO, a little Row 43 or something. Oh, I'll probably get that wrong. It's a little seaplane, and it is lovely, and they give that to you in clear so that you can um, basically just paint the bits you want, and your windshields will show up. Not as much probably windshield of that scale, I tell you. Uh, funnels, beautifully molded. I know you can't see through the plastic. I'm just giving you an idea of what I'm seeing, and it is really nice. I mean, if you've seen a review for the um, for the Zara, it's the same. It's beautiful. Okay, so there you go. This actual sprue they call Fumi. It's one of the few that they've actually got the word Fumi on it. Although that's actually a nameplate. Yeah, what do you want about Harry? Didn't he? Yes, sprues are the sprues. They don't actually put names on it. Um, stand. You get a sort of a stand with it. Whether I use it or not, probably use it while I'm building it. But then I'll buy a, a brass one to put in later. Or actually, you need to decide you're putting a brass one in early on. Little parts, absolutely gorgeous. Everything is well done. So on it goes, it goes, goes. Um, very fine detail. There's no flash. There's no flash. There's no um, seam edges that I can basically see. Look, this the new stuff from Trumpeter and Hobby Wars is just fantastic. You know, it um, you can just take it out of the bag, build it. It's like a Tamiya kit, but not as boring. <laughs> <laughs> oh dear, don't get me started there. Now there are a ton of parts in here, I'm going to leave them, but these are all little little tiny pieces of um, machine guns and fine things. And these are all your turrets, okay, so your turrets are beautifully done. And you'll find you've got two sprues, and you basically have got too many of those. That's your secondary armament, so more of that later, I'll discuss that. But you have enough to build up everything that you need. Okay, so there you go. And same again there, so... You have got a lot. You have got a lot of parts. Okay, so instructions. Well, it's pretty well typical for um, for these guys. Everything is clear. You get very clear sprue maps, so you can see basically everything that's in the kit. And there's over 600 parts to this one. I forget the exact number. I'm not trying. The um, the construction starts with just basically building the hull as you would, and you'll build up. Well, they have these little sub assemblies, and I think. They're only where they are because that was the space left in the manual. Because it's kind of they jump around. Like you build this up and then you don't use it for like another 10 steps. It's kind of strange. But it's okay. Um, everything's there. Funnels, all the rest of it. And this is where your PE parts going in. There are no plastic alternatives. That's it. You have to use the PE part. That's all you've got. And again here. Your range finders are lovely. They're really well made. The, um, they show you put the rails in as you go, so everything's there. You basically build it up. Very nice. Very easy to follow. 
Uh, this part here, you'll find the stand for that is photo etch, and you're going to have to build it with that. There's no other way. So these are searchlight um, towers, okay? You're going to have to use a photo etch. And similarly, sort of here, you've got ladders. They're all photo etch. You're going to have to use them. Um, and you've got here, basically, these little outriggers on the side here of this bit of superstructure. Photo etch, photo etch, photo etch. So if you don't like photo etch, you might not like this kit because you don't have a choice. But those of us who do like photo etch, like myself, you'll love it. So, yeah, there's a building up here of um, well, basically your main deck and, and the, um, the armor. Actually, there's four deck. Oh, gosh, there's a deck. And those are your secondary guns. Okay, so there you go. Lots and lots of stuff. Repeat, 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 repeat. Um, I like trumpeter instructions. To me, there's enough going on tells me what to do. Now take note here. See these two? They're just tubes. See them? And they slide in through the superstructure. Now we need to know about that when we get to looking at the polar. Okay, so very important. Boats all be built up beautifully. They're lovely. Um, so you've got another funnel here. Suddenly there's a sub-assembly for funnel here. Well, we built the funnel about six pages before. Well, oh well, there you go. <laughs> um, although, okay, you, you're building up more here, so funnel, 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 funnel. Greebles, finally greebles are going on your deck. Okay, so here you would have had to have paint your wood deck. As with ships, you'll usually paint things well in advance before you start assembling. Uh, most things are already pre-painted up and then you actually assemble them. Almost like building a car or something like that. Now taking special note here, here is the stern tripod mast. Okay, it's not much to it. Just tubes, that's all there is, okay? And we need to know that when we go to look at the polar, because it will be identical, okay? But it's not in the kit. Um, all right, so this final thing, again, another little PE thing. You've got no alternative. You need that to support the little searchlight, um, um, little decking piece there. Uh, so you're gonna have to do it. You have to do your PE, P, P, P. Railings go in across the whole hull. That's good. You're building up your main guns. It's rather strange. I always like to build those first, and I probably would. I would build my main guns up first. I always sort of enjoy doing that. I like to build all the armaments, you know, have it there. And you're putting on the davits and the boats and some of the uh, external stairs that lead down so that you can dock a boat and walk up onto the deck. And then they blow that whistle, you know. Permission to come aboard, sir. All that kind of exciting stuff. And here's your final sub-assemblies all go together. That's the thing with a ship. It's all about sub-assemblies. This entire piece is a build in its own. Like you can spend a few weeks just building that. You know, probably spend a week or so just building that. And then all the little things, you'll spend weeks and weeks on them. And really, to do these kind of kits justice, you know, you need to allow at least a couple of months, I would say. You know, you might be able to build it up in a month if you're really quick, but you might be rushing it. A couple of months. In my case, a couple of years. <laughs> no, I'd, I'd probably get this built up over six months of doing other things. So there you go. That is, oh, it's an RO-43. There you go, that's the name of that aircraft. Okay, let's have a quick look now at the Polar. And by comparison, we've been all excited. We've seen what the Fumi's got. Okay, how does it stack up to the Polar? Now the Polar kit, well, they have updated the, um, the painting diagram. So the one you get here, which is the Hobby Boss one, You'll notice it's very similar in the layout and style to what we have in the trumpet kit. Now the box is about the same size as the ones for the Zara, the Trumpeter Zara and the Trumpeter Fumi, right? The only difference is you've got about that much an inch or a couple of centimetres wider. But the box is very empty by comparison. In fact, the part count on this is not even listed on the box. I mean, the Fumi says about 420 parts, although I think with all the extra little bits and pieces, it gets around 600. But that's just my own personal thought on that. But this kit will be sub 200. It's really not a lot to it. And straight away you see the quality instructions. It's just, I mean, they pretend here, this is obviously a reprint, because this thing's probably been, you know, basically reboxed and, and, and pushed out in the last few years. But, um, it's just not the same, they're very basic. And when you start looking at the instructions, you go, oh dear, this looks a bit sort of ordinary, doesn't it? There's just not much to it. It's not much at all, and you'd be right. There isn't much to it, but it's not as horrible as it sounds. Now here's where you've got problems though, okay? Here's your aft mast, and it's single. But remember when I pointed out in the fume instructions, it should be a tripod. So 
it's a pretty easy fix because these are only tubes they're not hard to basically scratch and put in there you just got to have some drawings and figure it out and know where they go um, you've basically got the same sort of setup you've um you've got the, you know, well it is it's the same it's the same ship but, but um here we are we're only like two or three pages in and we we just about finished everything's getting put together there there's all your sub assemblies now we're already there we're only on stage four or five or something ridiculous okay and um goes together so let's have a look at the plastic okay and that'll give us a better idea of what's going on uh, we can straight away see it's one of those sort of horrible sort of kits where there's a join here and here to the main part so the superstructure everything which was subassemblies were actually built on a midsection deck and then it's joined that's because if it was battery powered you just simply lift that out and in there will be your motor and your batteries okay so that was the thinking which when we're doing a static model it's a bit annoying because then you've got a horrible join here that you've got to somehow putty up and you know get get looking good especially if it's supposed to be a wood deck it's a nightmare which was the problem with the Arizona and why I bought all the wood decks for it and they solved that issue let's see what we have to do with this kit well the good news is everything's in plastic bags just like the trumpet kit and that's nice so all the parts are protected Then we start to look at the moulding. Well, it's not as crisp, is it? It's um, it's still not too bad. I mean, it come up with a wash. It's um, it's all right. I mean, by the time you painted that, and you probably would drill out some of those holes. I, I don't know. They look a bit bit shallower. Um, but maybe that's just my eye. Um, but still, it's it's all there. So the uh, the hull is not too bad. But what you start to see immediately are the reasons why this kit is sort of maligned is that's the mounting points there for batteries and a motor and then there's your basically set up already for your shafts so that you can put little screws on this thing and you can let it run around inside your bathtub okay or a pond so there's been compromises made so these um these angles for the um the prop shafts may be wrong in fact i think they are from memory you know? uh, you've also got a horrible join here it looks like they whacked something into the mold so who knows what was done there whether this was added to be motorized and then they've added like a little bit in here so that's quite horrible and you would have to clean all that up so that's a bit disappointing but that's just a little sanding job and quite frankly it's going to be down the bottom of the hole you won't see it much okay once it's all cleaned up so let's pull the um, deck parts out like we did with the Fumi and see how well this kit goes together straight out of the box now for this polar kit you have four pieces to put the deck together as opposed to the two that we had with the Fumi and I had to rubber band the stern and the um, the bow pieces here um, otherwise they just keep popping out and this is due to a, a flex in of the hull whole side sort of flex in um, but they do fit that's just cut straight off the sprue basically just a tiny trim with a knife I mean you're not getting that beautiful join that we had with Fumi but this is 20 years older okay this kit is 20 years older but look you um, it's the standard of even some old Tamiya kits all right there's not much difference you do have some planking you may be able to see that there's some planking lines there which you could paint up that come up quite good the the greebles are okay they're a little bit softer but still you could paint them up and make them look good and they'll be fine they'll be fine and I'll whack a wood deck on in a sec so you can see what happens then again the the bow yeah it's just certainly not a the quality of the Fumi but hey this is a two shekel kit the Fumi retails up to 14 shekels here 15 sometimes there's a big difference isn't there so you could scrape those off and make your own if you want them really super duper or the fact is by the time you paint that up and do you're going to put red and white stripes all over it it'll look fine you're going to have a harder job of striping this one than the Fumi because these guys are all in the way they're already there so going to be quite a job to try and mask and airbrush that up but it could be doable now when you get to the um, your middle parts here it's a little bit it's a little bit fully see if I can actually get away with it so um, well, hang on yeah it's um it's a bit weird so this part slides into here and 
looking at, as I said, the um, the hull sides warp in a little bit, which is quite typical for these old kits, single hull. So that goes into there, and then this part fits over the top and joins to there. Now this is where you get the horrible, horrible issue of these joins. Now at the stern you've got wood planks and then you've got um, basically vinyl actually. They have a vinyl clad the decks. So that's a natural demarcation line that you can work with. That's okay. Up here at the bow, well again you've got vinyl running into a um, bit of vinyl and then your stripes. Well you might be able to sort of mangle those two together. We'd have to have a look at the diagram. So the way they've done it is basically well they've ended the stripes there. I mean you could just paint your stripes right up to here because they did vary. They kind of occasionally a bit further along, occasionally a bit further back. They actually do vary on some of the photos. Uh, but your wood deck here, well yeah that comes all the way up pretty well to that um, that joint they had. So these natural lines lend themselves to you painting that stripy red and white. This can be all the grey vinyl and then that can be the wood. And you don't worry so much that the kit has got these horrible joints. So there is there is a method in their madness. It can work. It can work. But the fit is nowhere near as good. Of course not. It's 20 years older. But it does go together. It could be worse. I have seen kits that are far worse out of the box. You have to do a lot of work on them. The Arizona for one. Uh, before you actually get them to fit. So it's doable. Now everything else in the polar kit is on two sprues and they are bagged. So let's um let's free them from the captivity. Oh, no, separate that, there we go. So they're out. And we'll just have a look at a few things, a few things of interest. Now, this is what's different. What makes the polar different from the rest of the Zara class is this citadel, which is basically that goes around the four mast. And that's the bridge area. So that's different. Now, that moulding is actually not too bad. It'll take a wash, it'll come up nicely, all your holes, or your portholes, and your things are all drilled out. Your, um, your funnels, the ladders are quite nicely moulded. So suddenly, actually, it doesn't look too bad. This is a bit horrible. And of course, we're sport with photo etch on the, um, on the, the uh, trumpeter kits, so, you know, but you could scratch something better if you wanted to, or just paint it black and who cares, it'll all disappear. The um, the other parts here of the superstructure, well, yeah, you're going to have all individual bits, which is how the older Trumpeter and Hobby Boss kits were. But they're not bad. They're not bad at all. I think that probably it's all holed out so that you could um, you could light the thing. Or maybe when you put it out of the bathtub, you could turn upside down all the water and drain out of these holes. Who knows? But actually, they're not too bad for this kind of kit. And considering the money, what you've got is workable. And you can build something nice out of it. Your aircraft, this time the row is plastic. It's not um, clear styrene, it's just the gray plastic. So you're, um, you're not gonna be able to have those clear windshields. But who cares? It doesn't matter. Now here's your big bone of contention is these tripod masts. They're not there. They only give you single masts. Hopeless. We'll talk about that in a sec. It's an easy fix. Okay, so moving on this sprue, well, we've got lots of guns. Lots and lots and lots and lots of guns. Now, you'll only get six of the four inch for this, so you'll have to do a later version. Okay, as opposed to you get eight of the four inch turrets on the um, Fumi kit. So you can do a different version. I'll talk about that later. Um, they're not too bad for what they are. They're pretty basic, but I mean, if you compare them to the other kit, you might just add a few little bits of greebly stuff here. The range finders, well, they're okay. They're soft, but you could kind of tidy them up and they might look a little better. But they're not quite as horrible as I thought they were actually. Maybe they've tidied them up from some of the earlier kits. Because I've seen some people really complain about these. But they're basic. Yeah, well you could add just a few things. Look, there are injection sink marks there, yes. But part of those, fill those up. Your boats, well, they're a bit ordinary. Yeah, you've got <laughs> injection points there. Um, yeah, your boats are pretty horrible. So what I'd probably do is the boat's going to be the same as my Fumi. I could um, basically take some some mouldings of the ones of my Fumi and then basically cast my own. Okay, so I could do that. 
the kit surprisingly is flash free Did you notice that even down to the tiny LA guns so it's not as bad as we feared there's some things that are older and letting us down but it's an older kit but you could probably live with those just clean them up bug you know putty them up they'll be fine they'll be okay okay the anchors are incredibly thick <laughs> that's huge but quite frankly once you glued one and painted them you probably wouldn't even notice okay you've got some sort of ladder arrangement here it's um pretty horrible if you wanted to you can buy some aftermarket ladders who knows all right so stuff is not absolutely horrendous it's just older it's an older kit simpler i mean you've just got to look at some of the older tamiya ships like the much lauded bismarck it's better than this i'll admit but it's nowhere near the quality of their newer kits all right nowhere near the tamiya bismarck for as far as all the bismarcks are available out there is a bit average it's um yeah it's okay and this is the same for a trumpeter kit or a hobby boss kit this one's a bit average but it's still doable okay so here's your prop shafts i believe you've got to change the angle on those because they are um, they're designed to go way too out but you know if that, if that bothers you if you want to get that accurate but look those parts are nowhere near horrendous as they could be they're all usable and with a little fiddling and a little bit of scale modeling this is what the, the, the hobby is all about you can actually make them look quite nice all right so we've got a few problems with this kit what can we do to fix it well a wood deck can fix this whole stern problem all right and that's the artworks one fits perfectly and looks lovely now interestingly it's not as nice as the wood deck with the fumi which is the one from hong kong never sent um, they don't actually use that name. You find them on eBay. Just search for a Zara or a, um, a Fumi deck. I don't know if they make one for the Polar. Now the decks are not the same. They're not interchangeable at all. Okay. So as you can see, completely different lengths. Um, in fact, put them up against each other. You'll notice even the turret positions are slightly different. They shouldn't be. But that's the difference in the kits. So you can't buy one and think you're going to use it on the other one. The deck greebles are different with each of the ships in the class. They, for some reason, decided, oh, today we move this one over here, you know, as the Italians do. <laughs> but um, you can see the difference in quality. Now, I kind of like these ones from um, from Hong Kong. They're really thin, and yeah, they kind of look a bit stripy under the lights. But by the time I get a wash on that and I sort of scrub a few things, it'll look the way I want. Artworks decks are good. They're sort of an industry standard anyway. But to my way of thinking, they're a bit more cartoonish in the printing they put on them. But it's Arthur Martha. Either way, a wood deck, I think, improves the look of your model. So there's that solution. You can use that to improve your polar. And I don't think the wood deck for this is very expensive. I think it's one or two shekels. Probably about the same price as the kit, I admit. But um, you certainly will get a lot of bang for your bucks and hide a lot of imperfections and problems. The other thing is these... Um, Big Blue Boy, I think it's called. Yeah, Big Blue Boy. They produce this full PE set, which gives you all the railings and all the stairs and um, improves the kit no end. And finally, you can add some brass barrels. If you want, plastic uh, barrels in the kit aren't too bad, actually. And as you saw, even down to the um, smaller guns, they were molded fairly nicely. But a set of brass barrels can come in and really just add well maybe they don't what I buy them for is I break barrels off ships I'm always quite ham-fisted and I knock things and I snap the bloody barrels off them if I buy metal ones they're less likely to they're, they're securely CA glued in there and um, instead I just knock the whole ship flying <laughs> but yeah that's one reason now uh, there's a set here I've got from master barrel but you only get the primary 200 millimeter ones the 8 inch and the secondary 4 inch 100 millimeter ones okay and you get 12 which is all you're going to need for the polar okay because basically you only get six of the twin barrel secondary turrets so you only need 12 barrels okay but if you go to Ava they say this is for the polar 1941 although that is wrong because they give you 16 and um, that really only works if you're going to do the ship in the early 30s, 31, 32, before they were refit and they put the extra AA guns in. Mm, more of that in a sec. But um, this set will work for either. In fact, 
Each of these sets will work for every single uh, one of the Zara class. So it doesn't matter. As long as it's 1350 scale, any of the kits, you'll be able to use these because they really didn't change. The only thing they changed were the amount of AA guns. And um, there's enough in this one to cover both the early and the late. And there's enough for here that you can basically at least do the late, which is all the kits are molded as. Now, the final thing that you might like to do to your polar is to fix this tripod problem. Okay. Now, these are warship plans from um, Morsky. Okay. I will put a link in the description because you must pay for these. Yeah, and um, they're not much. It's like only about half a shekel or something, or even a shekel. They're not expensive at all. And if you're going to do something like this where you just like to know where all the bits are going to go, he does these wonderful plans, and these are in 1350 scale or 1700 scale. And you know, you can just basically lay down your plastic and copy off there. So this is what you would do to fix those tripods, right? You get yourself some evergreen spray or, or whatever, scratch spray, okay, and you'd simply find one that's about the, um, the right thickness, all right, well, we'll say it's, maybe it's that one, and uh, basically you can just, I think I've pulled out every single one except the right size, but you would, um, that's about right, you can have a look, see, and you can just measure it straight off their plans and make your own tripod, because there's just three tubes, and add a few greebles if you like, if you want to make it a bit more accurate. Now, the tricky one is here, because that citadel, right, that they've built up, which is completely different than if you have a look at, okay, there's no citadel on the Fumi, and there isn't on the Zara or the Golgonzola, okay, on the Godzilla, what the hell it's called. Here you can see where those tripod tubes are going to go, it's a lot easier, and you can figure it out from the drawings, okay, and again, I have drawings for the fume uh, here for the Zara as well, but you don't need them because they're already in the kit. You can use if you've got the kit like I have, you can see. But now yeah, I'm waffling on. Basically, if you want to make it accurate, you need to get this tripod here, and it is going to push through that citadel. So you're going to have to um, basically the best way that I've seen online is you make it out of about three pieces. So you make this piece, and you work out where the mounting hole, where the hole is on the deck, and where it's going to go in. These plants. From this guy are invaluable and I would say if you're going to attempt to try and correct the polar go and buy a set of warship plans off them okay link is in the description to sum up this video with a little bit of care and attention and not a lot of scratch building like just the level that you'd be capable of just you know some um, evergreen tube you can create those um, missing posts that go into the mast um, basically the four of the mass tripods, right, the tripod there, and a little bit of tidying up and putting in the aftermarket, well I would do that anyway, that's like a given for me, you don't have to, but putting in a wood deck and using the metal barrels, especially buying the photo etch railing set, right, which lifts the polar no end. And that was hard to find for many years, but now it is quite readily available here. We've even got it down in Melbourne at B&A. They've got a bloody old stack of them there. But that, um, it's Big Blue Boy, I think it's called, yeah? That, uh, that upgrade set is worth having because it does lift your polar. And then a little bit of scratch, a little bit of tidying up. If you're lucky enough to have both kits, like I have, then you've got clues as to what those secondary turrets should look like and what the range finders and the radar bits should look like. And then you can choose to clean up your parts, scratch, or even you could cast from one kit to the other um, the parts you need. So you can end up with basically a kit or a build of the Polar that is approaching the quality of the brand new Zara and Fumi. There you go. So I might actually build both ships at the same time. Not straight away, don't hold your breath. I've got a lot to get out of the way. But when I do, and, and it's pretty well high on my list, I would build these two side by side because it's faster to build two identical ships. I mean, they're, they're identical up until the point of maybe the Citadel and the superstructure. And the other thing I'm going to do is the uh, this class, when it first came out in 19, was laid down in 1930 or 1929 actually, and then they came out in 30. 132, right? The first ship was the Zara and it was followed by the Fumi and then it was followed by the, well, I can't pronounce it, the, the, the Gorgonzola, 
right? Godzilla. I don't know how to say it. <laughs> and then the Polar came last. Now, the Polar was supposed to be slightly better. It's going to be the flagship of the fleet. And um, that's where they were going to really put the Admiral in because they believed these cruisers were some of the most well-protected. In fact, they were. For their time, they were the most armoured and well-protected cruisers in the world. Okay? Now, when they first came out, they had eight secondary guns which were twin barrel four inch so you actually had an extra um, turret on the stern raised deck there which isn't apparent in the polar kit but in the fumi kit you get the extra parts to put that extra gun emplacement in and so i'm going to backdate mine to about the early 30s by uh, fumi and give it that extra um, turret because I've got the barrels for it. The set that I bought, as you saw, I bought a actually bought a set of barrels for the Polar, which had 16 of the four inch. So that allows me to build up eight twin turrets. I'm going to do your math: 16 divided by two is eight. Okay, take up your shoes and socks if you need to. You'll figure it out. So um, I'm going to ditch some of the AA and I'm going to do my Fumi as the older version. But then I'll probably break the rules and use the later camo. Oh well. <laughs> that's what I do <laughs> I just want it to be pretty that's all and I rather like the idea of having the bigger armament and less of the AA I'm not a big fan of fun I'm, I don't have fun and I'm not a big fan of ships covered in AA guns I sort of prefer the older stuff which is just one or two calibers you know and well unless you go to the old French ships with 15 different sizes of turrets slapped all over the place and the thing looked like it could capsize in any second that's a subject for another video Okay, well, I hope from this you could see the Polar is still basically a prospect. And the Polar is cheap. So you pick up the kit for a couple of shekels, probably even less. And then even if you only bought the railings, which is really going to help it along the way, those photo railings, you've spent half the new price of a Zara or a Gorgonzola. Oh, they haven't got that one out yet. A Fumi. Okay. And... If you wanted to put a wood deck and some metal barrels on, well, you'd probably do that anyway with those other kits. So those those figures are extra. So again, you can save yourself quite a bit by buying the Polar, getting a little bit of scratch plastic and a few diagrams. I'll put the link in below in the description to a guy that does fantastic plans, which I showed you, so I show the difference, of the, um, the, the Zara and the polar and how they change now the zara will work for the gorgonzola you know, gorilla uh, um, godzilla one as well as my fumi okay there's really not much in it slight differences say really in how they put the cranes up and time and other things which you can research you can do that on your own so there you go that's my polar and my fumi what do you think let me know in the comments would you now buy a polar thinking oh actually it's not too hard or would you go, no, bugger it, that's just too much work, Harry. I wouldn't bother with that. I'm going to buy the kit that's already done for me by Trumpeter and bugger it. Put it in my stash and let it sit there for 10 years gathering dust. <laughs> all right, that's all I've got to say. <laughs> I'll leave you on that note. Bugger off and do some modelling, all right? Goodbye from Australia, and it's Huru from Harry Houdini.